So it's the night before my monitoring visit. I go to the site every six weeks. Um, the difference between what I do with monitoring is I only go for on-site monitoring. So in between my site visits, I don't do anything um, as far as monitoring activities are concerned for this study. So it's like a perfect uh, gig for me, but it's not the norm for most CRAs. So what I do the night before a monitoring visit is I will look at the EDC, because remember, I'm not checking the EDC in between my visits. Look at the EDC to see what and how many visits to expect. Look at if they enrolled any new patients, if any patients have been withdrawn. Uh, look to see if previous queries have been answered, because that usually takes a lot of time. And then I start uh, the preparation for the monitoring the next day. So I will be in this video showing you sort of a day in the life of a CRA not a traditional theory. Just landed SFO, about to do some an IMV for an oncology study, and then fly right back. Quick trip. And this is an interim monitoring visit, so there's no time sensitive things like you would have in an IMV, or sorry, in a site selection visit or in a site initiation visit where you have a set time to meet with the PI and the staff. This is an interim monitoring visit, so I just need to do my source data verification, source data review, regulatory maintenance, and then I have an appointment with the pharmacy uh, later on today, and then I'm gonna lift right back and fly back home, and I'm done the IMV and probably finish my report either on site or uh, on the plane. Not sure yet. I also got some email questions. Um, actually, good timing about oncology, so I'm going to discuss as I monitor today and try to answer the questions. So I'm here at the site. Got here about an hour late, um, but it worked out well. I ha actually had a lot of visits to look at, but they were many of them were short visits. So I'm actually almost done with. I would say 70% of my source data verification, source data review. Uh, I've been here almost four hours. So in a half an hour, I'm gonna meet with the pharmacist. And then when I'm done with that, I'm gonna do the IP accountability. I'm gonna try to talk to the PI if I can. Um, basically, since I've gotten here, I went through the previous um, action items and I went through the previous queries in the EDC and now I'm just doing new SDV, SDR, seeing if there's any deviations, any AEs. This is oncology, so you can expect a lot of AEs, even some SAEs. Um, trying to figure out why one particular patient is no longer in the study. It's not clear from the source. So that's gonna be an action item. Just basic CRA stuff. I'm gonna get to the oncology question um, at the end of the day and uh, discuss resist and things like that, answer the viewer's question, so stay tuned. All right, so I just finished up the tour of the pharmacy. Uh, basically what I did was some IP reconciliation. The cool thing about this site is that they have everything electronically. All the drug accountability forms are all done electronically, so I don't actually have to count, although I did anyways, count the, bo the boxes and the bottles this is an oncology study, so there's files, and then there's some oral uh, files also, in addition to the IV files. Uh, but it's really cool that it's all electronic. That only took me about 20 minutes. I put the inventory down, dealt with a couple of uh, expiration date issues, and then I uh, focused on the RESIS criteria, which is the question I actually got from a viewer who, it, it's very timely, what do you actually do with the RECIST? R-E-C-I-S-T. It's very important for oncology. I'm not gonna get into what that is. I've done it in another video before. Essentially, you're not a doctor when you're a CRA. So it's not your job to argue with the PI or the investigators, but you are supposed to confirm, okay? And there's different things to look at with the RECIST, like tumor size, right? LD, long diameter. As the short diameter for the lymph nodes. And I can get into that, but basically you add those up and that is the RESIS criteria. So what you're gonna do is make sure that those things match. So you're gonna have to actually do some math 
and see if it adds up to what's in the EDC and what's on the source. Another thing is the TNM, which is the cancer staging. The tumor, the lymph nodes, and whether it metastasized. Now, you gotta confirm again. You gotta sometimes read between the lines. If you read in the progress notes that the tumor has metastasized, right? But then you see somewhere else in the source, or maybe in the EDC, that they put a M0, which means no, nothing has metastasized, then you know that's wrong. It should be a 1. So those are the kind of things you do as a CRA. You're not really making any clinical judgments. You're just confirming whether what you're reading matches up and makes sense with what's actually in the documents in the EDC. So hopefully that helps. We'll talk a little bit more as I wrap up my monitoring report at the airport, see if any other issues are there. But basically a day in the life of a CRA. Just wanted to give you all a little taste of what it's like. Even though I'm not a traditional CRA and I don't do this every day, um, it's still a little taste of what a CRA does when they go monitor a site. Talk to you soon. So site visit done, now I'm at uh, SFO, waiting to go back to Orange County for an hour flight. A couple of key takeaways and notes from this day, okay, I don't want people to get the wrong idea. Most CRAs do not fly the morning of for a site visit, unless it's a visit later in the day. So sometimes with a site selection visit, or even a site initiation visit, they won't get started till later in the afternoon. In those cases, I have seen CRAs travel the day of. Uh, when it comes to interim monitoring visits, typically they happen early in the morning. Like I was scheduled to be at, on site from nine to four. My flight was delayed for about 20 minutes, which is not unusual flying into San Francisco. They always delay planes in the morning due to fog. Um, one time I was delayed eight hours but I flew in the day before, so it did not affect my schedule. You are risking it even on short trips like this hour of flight. You're risking being late, and I was late today by an hour, but luckily nobody really cared because it's IMV. I didn't really have any scheduled to meet with anybody at the site. They just have the, all the source and regulatory there waiting for me. Another thing is, unlike most CRAs, my monitoring plan I only do monitoring activities on site visits and I only go to this site every six to eight weeks so in between every interim monitoring visit that I do I don't look at the EDC I don't deal with queries a real CRA would go back home all the queries that I issued if I were a real CRA Tomorrow, I would be, or tomorrow Saturday, but Monday, or certainly next week, I would be looking to see if the site answered these queries. I'm a contract CRA, so I'm not required to do that. And they're using a risk-based monitoring strategy, so they have people in-house that are doing these query things. Um, but pretty much most of my mornings, because of that, because I don't do anything in between my visits, most of my mornings at an interim monitoring visit, is going through old uh, queries that have been answered by the site. So that take about 30 minutes just to make sure the site answered all the old queries, see if they didn't, if I had to remind them to redo it. And then I get started with the SDV, SDR. So that's unusual. Uh, most monitors will already have that done, hopefully. Um, and then they would just get started fresh with the new data to review. Whereas with me, I gotta scramble, I gotta hustle and make sure I get the uh, previous queries closed. Um, at least the ones that were answered before I start my SDV. So my report's done. It's pretty much done. Like I'm probably, I don't feel like working on the plane. It's only an hour. So I'm gonna listen to an audiobook on the plane. Maybe edit this video on the plane. When I get home, um, I'll probably just take 15, 20 minutes to make sure everything's finalized in the report, submit it to the sponsor, um, with all the attachments that I collected from the regulatory and the investigational product. Like I mentioned, all that stuff's electronic, so I just it was easy for me to download it all. Uh, submit it, submit my invoice, wait for the revisions from the sponsors, wait for the questions. Uh, they'll always ask questions or have you follow up with certain things. 
um, communicate with the PI, document it, because I did not get a chance to meet with the PI today, and that's it. But other than the slightly unusual things um, in my situation as a contract CRA, uh, this is a typical monitoring visit, Orange County to San Fran, San Fran back to Orange County, all in one day. So uh, hopefully it provides value for somebody out there. Take care.